In this last video, let's explore if you have a combination of series and parallel circuit together. So let's take a look at the reverse system and label the parts. Let's part A here. So this point will correspond to A until here. That's B. Let's call it B1 here. And this side here will be B2. And over here, there will be your C1. This will be your C2 or base just C. And then over here, there will be a point D point E and then point F over here. So over here, this will be my B1, B2. Then coming up from the R1, there will be your C1, C2. So basically here's just C, it's the same. And then point D, point E, and lastly point F. So that shows the different part of the river system against the circuit. Next, let's find the total effective resistance. To do that, we definitely have to do the R1 and R2. They are in parallel, so we have to do them together. And so the total effective resistance of the whole circuit. So for R1 and R2, I'll be taking 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But remember, because they're parallel, you have to invert back. And then once you combine R1 and R2, it is in series with R3. So basically, you just add R3. So that's how you find the total effective resistance. Next, let's talk about the current. So let's label if the main current that comes up from the cell and let it be I0. When it comes to this point, it will split. Let it be I1 here. And this will be your I2. And then, of course, this part here will be I1. And this part here is I2. And then they combine back, let it be I3 in the copper wire CD, pass through R3, and then let it be I4 here. Okay, I hope you understand that I3 and I4 is the, there's only one path in which the current flow, so you should know that they are the same. So what is the relationship? Okay, and let's look at the river system. So the main river here, that will be I0 going through the copper wire all the way until point B okay but when it comes to this point you can see the river actually split into two smaller river I1 and I2 so in the river system that will be your I1 and this will be your I2 and then they will combine at point C over here which correspond to this point and then you sum I1 and I2 together that will be your main current flowing through the portion of the copper wire CD. So that will be your I3 over here. Okay. And then pass through resistor R3. And then finally, that will be your I4. So if you understand the river system, the big river will flow, then split into two smaller river, combines back, you will join back. So the current will be the same and then continue on. So if I were to write the relationship, I0 will be equals to my I1 plus I2, which is equals to I3, which is also equals to your I4, which is also equals to your I flowing through the battery. So that's the relationship for the current. Next, let's take a look at the potential difference. Let's assume some values. Let's say V1, the potential difference across R1 is 4 volt. That means to say V2 across R2 has to be 4 volt because R1 and R2, they are connected in parallel. So the potential difference must be the same. If across the parallel circuit here is 4 volt, that means to say in series with, with the R3 here, the potential difference V3 has to be 6 volt. Only then, the sum of the two potential difference will give you an EMF of 10 volt. Next, let's refer to the river system. So coming up from point A, it will be 10 meters throughout. So copper wire from point A to point B. So this is 10 volt. All the way here will be 10 volt. And so at this point here on the river system is equivalent to 10 meters. And we know that there's a after passing through R1 or R2, there's a potential difference of 4 
volt that means there's a height difference of 4 meters so there's a drop in height so that means to say at point C here coming up from R1 and R2 it will be 6 meter and then from C to D it's just copper wire so the height here will still be 6 meter and lastly point E it will be ground 0 so that means to say at point B it will be still 10 meters 10 volt and then after coming out from the resistor R1 and R2 the C here will be 6 volt and then from C to D this will still be 6 volt and then lastly this is 0 volt so once again the potential difference here is 6 volt and the potential difference 10 minus 6 therefore it gives you a potential difference of 4 volt across R1 and R2 so how do you write the or understand the relationship so we can write EMF is equals to V1 plus V3 the V1 is referring to the potential difference across R1 which is the same as R2 plus the R the potential difference across R3 which is in series so if you look at the reverse system here this drop in 4 meters is like the potential difference across R1 or R2 which is like your V1 or V2 then over here this is like your V3 there's a height difference of 6 meters or potential difference of 6 volt so alternatively I can write V2 plus V3 because V1 is equals to V2 because they are connected in parallel so I hope you understand the relationship these are not formulas it's basically applying the understanding the rules for series and parallel circuit and then apply it here so I hope it helps